In this episode, we'll cover the five things I've noticed between a radio station website that gets 100 visitors per day and the one that gets 20,000 plus visitors per day. This is Better Radio Websites, the podcast for radio professionals who want to see their website generate more traffic and revenue. Each week, your host, Jim Sherwood, and his special guests give you time-tested tips and secret tricks to ensure your radio station dominates digital in your market. Here we go. Hi, it's Jim, and welcome to Better Radio Websites, the podcast that wants to help you get more visitors and the most revenue from your radio station website. Over the last nine years of providing radio station websites, I've noticed how some stations barely break 100 visitors per week, while others get around 2,000 to 4,000 visitors per day, and some are getting over 20,000 visitors per day in a very, very small market. This is not some big major city. This is a small market putting in 20,000 visitors per day, almost one per every person in that county. All right. So think how easy it would be to sell a station website if you walked into a business and showed them numbers that said, hey, their banner ad could be in front of 20,000 visitors tomorrow. So what sets this 20,000 visitors per day radio station apart from the 100 visitors per day radio station website? Here are the five things that I've learned. Number one is the station owner and the GM have to be committed to having this active online presence. All of those points that I mentioned earlier, they have to be committed for that. They will ultimately enforce everything that the radio station does, uh, their contests, promotions, morning show, local news, format news, events, whatever. All of that stuff has a website component. Notice I I didn't say online or digital component. I said a website component. Because some folks may, may think, Well, you know, we just put everything we do on Facebook. Whenever I hear that, I go, oh, no. About a year or so ago, Radio Inc. gave a shout out to a Pennsylvania radio station that reached over 1 million likes on Facebook. Now, while this is a great milestone for the radio station, I had to go check it out. Uh, What they're doing is amazing. But this great Facebook page had no post linking back to the radio station website. Unfortunately, they didn't gain any revenue from all of those likes and uh, shares and whatnot because none of it was going back to the radio station where their banner ads were residing. So it's important to do everything possible to bring visitors back to the station websites where our clients are paying to be there. I love the phrase, use the assets you rent, like social media, to strengthen the assets you own, your website. That's where you have your banner ads, okay? So post everything on the station website and then share it to social media platforms. Just don't post on Facebook that there was a wreck at the corner of so-and-so and so-and-so, and 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 here's a picture of it. Post it on the website and then quickly share it to Facebook. For more information, visit website.com. All right, now the question may be raised, well, how much of other stuff should we post on Facebook? Well, that really depends on your station, depends on your market, depends on your listeners, how engaging you are with that, because you do still want to increase those followers. And even if you have a lot of followers, though, a lot of folks don't know this, and and they're really surprised whenever they hear this. Let's say you had 20,000 followers on Facebook, all right? Right now, you had 20,000 people that uh, follow you on Facebook. If you put a post on there right now, about um, whatever news story that you have, even on your website, doesn't matter what it is, the likelihood of all 20,000 followers seeing that post, what would you guess the percentage of all of those people seeing that post? It's absolutely zero. There is no chance that the all 20,000 of those people are going to see your post that you put on Facebook because Facebook adjusted their algorithm years ago that said, oh, no, no, only a small percentage of your followers will see the post. And then they'll give you a little thing that says, "Do you, would you like to boost this post to have more people see it? Pay here. That's how Facebook is making their money because they got you locked, locked in early on where everybody saw everything that you posted, but now It's only a very small percentage, and only if those people have been interested in something relating to that in the past. Again, if you have a lot of followers on Facebook, that's amazing, great for you, but everything that you post is only going to be seen by a small percentage of that. Even the things that you do post there, bring it back 
to the station website where you can uh, gain a few more page views and a, a, f- a few more unique visitors. That's numbers that you can show somebody to advertise longer or be a new advertiser on your website. Social media is not viable by itself to generate any kind of substantial revenue for the radio station. Now, I hear some folks say that they have no content to put on their website. No content. Was there any kind of local news happening on your station this morning? Did the jocks talk about anything at all happening in town? That could have been a post that they also put on the website. Uh, How about a local public affairs show? Uh, Any high school sports that you're doing? Uh, Farmers markets? Conventions? Anything happening like a rodeo, a car show, a local race? How about police reports? Do you have uh, somebody that monitors that in your uh, market? Let's see, obituaries, yard sales. All of this stuff is happening in your market. That could be content that you put on your website. Think of everything as being content. And while we're talking about content, if you think that you want to get an RSS feed from somewhere and have that be the content on your website, an RSS feed that you just show on your website is not content. If they link off-site anywhere else other than maybe another property that, that you own, let's say you have a, uh, a format radio station, but then you also have a news radio station. If you wanted to put those news RSS feed from your news station on your other radio station website, that's perfectly fine. But I'm talking about the top 10 CMT country music news. If you were to click on one of those links, it would take you to cmt.com or rollingstone.com or MTV or wherever. I look at those when I see those on a website as, and there's normally like five or 10 of them, is five or 10 reasons to leave. We don't have this kind of content, so go over here and get it. Well, they're not gonna come back to you to get that next time, so don't even put those RSS feeds on your website. All right, so number one, upper management sees the big picture, rallying the troops to be on board and do everything that they can to put more content onto the website. The number two thing that sets uh, the 20K visitors per day website from the 100 visitors per day website is ensuring that all station personnel are on the same page. Programming, sales, everybody is on the same page. Sellers, they should know every sellable opportunity that you have on the website, just as they know the length of every available commercial that's open on air. If you don't have a a digital inventory list for your radio station websites, then start one right away. Your digital inventory list should include every possible thing that could be sold on your station website, from your ad block locations, your uh, page sponsorships, your premium sponsorships, streaming sponsored, podcast opportunities, uh, email sponsorship, paid social engagement, smart speaker pre-rolls. I mean, cover the entire gamut and put everything on this digital inventory list. Now, once your sellers have this list in hand, they should understand that the website now becomes a integral part of their pitch. Every pitch includes the station website. Now, you can decide whether if it's going to be included in every buy or separate. It really depends on the amount of visitors that you have coming to your website on a daily basis, whether you start to move away from including it in buys to selling it actually separately. If you've never seen a digital inventory list and don't know how to get started, you can actually go to our website to download an Excel sample. It's at skyrocketradio.com slash podcast slash digital dash inventory dash list. Now, once sales is on board, be sure that your on-air team is engaged too. And they are actually helping you put content on this website. News, weather, sports, uh, contests, promotions, events, Uh, DJ blogs, podcasts, video, everything. Every on-air personality should know the importance of the station website and increasing visitors just as they would their on-air ratings. If uh, if you're in a market that has ratings, just pretend that, hey, the website is going to be a rated market now because we have stats that we can see every single day. They should be aware of all fresh content that is appearing on the website, not just theirs, so they can promote it in every way possible. Ensure that everybody knows every contest, promotion, event, 
everything will have an online component as well, even though it's just information or something that's on air only. If you have an on air contest, it should be included in your contest on your website as well, even though it's online only and you're not taking actual uh, entries, then it should be included anyway. And you want to make sure that every piece of content is on the website in case somebody has missed something when they were listening on the radio. I mean, we can't uh, TiVo radio and go back and forth and, you know, hey, I missed that. What was that? What was he talking about? So it's crucial that the website include everything that somebody could have missed on air. It was an interesting article, actually, from uh, Radio Insider. The corporate digital content director for Beasley Media Group's local market said that they are including a much bigger commitment to producing local digital content, aligning the interest and passions of our DJs with the audiences to deliver more engaging digital content that allows for deeper connections to our local fans. This digital centric approach is now in place in several markets and early returns show exceptional growth in traffic, page views, and DJ participation. The key here is you're producing content that the DJs are actively engaged in. Are there any opportunities for personality driven content in your market? Do you have somebody on your team that has interest outside of the radio station that they could perhaps make a podcast about and put it on the radio station website? Are they the announcer at a high school sports? Do they drive a race car or dirt track? Are they particularly in interested in gardening or hunting? Or do they go to car shows and or do they just love cooking events? Do they do movie reviews? Are they big hunter or fisherman? If you have one of your DJs who's really involved in one of these things, then have them bring that content and put that on the website in some manner. Back when I was at Clear Channel, everybody bucked writing these daily blog posts. We all hated it, but we had no idea how that could have actually improved our shows by putting all of that content on the website. It could have helped us out tremendously, but we didn't. We just didn't see the big picture. Have your on-air folks pick something that they're super passionate about and look for ways to develop digital content like podcasts, blogging, videos, that sort of thing. These can eventually grow into new brands for your radio group with separate websites. And if you get to a point where a brand needs, you know, has to be moved from a page to its own separate website, that's going to open up all kinds of more sponsorship opportunities for your uh, clients. So a local sports page could turn into a local sports hub website. A local event section can turn into a local events portal. A home improvement event page could turn into a website with monthly tips, that sort of thing. So, I mean, there's a lot of great opportunities out there. It just depends on your market and your area and your DJ's willingness to jump on board and start producing this great content. Now, the third thing that I've noticed that sets the 20K visitors radio station apart from the 100 visitors per day website, well, you need to assign somebody to take all of this in and be the point person or digital content director. This is what I used to be uh, back when I was at Clear Channel. This person needs to be passionate about seeing the website look professional and grow overall. They review monthly and quarterly visitor data. You can have them work with the programming team to create and implement new evolving online features. Ideally, this person will have some graphics ability. They'll be able to create promotional artwork. They'll oversee ensuring that all photos online have the proper copyright in place. This person might also maintain the station email list and send periodic station emails with news and current promotions. They'll also work closely with the sales manager to maintain that digital inventory list that we talked about and uh, update them with all kinds of great things that can be sponsored as new things get added to it. They'll also work with the sales personnel to create client banner ads that pop. Also, they'll provide analytics information to the managers. So you have that online point person or digital content director, whatever you want to call them. The fourth thing that I've noticed how 20K visitors per day website differs from the 100 visitors per day website is number four. They offer performance incentives or bonuses. As your website traffic grows, so should your revenue. Uh, reward the people that make that happen. If the morning show blog is a success and you have clients waiting to be sponsored on that page, Bonus the team that's reaching or exceeding those goals every month. Incentives will invest and encourage your team into creating new, exciting content. Bonuses, they don't have to be cash. It could be dinner at a trade restaurant, 
concert tickets, ball game, that sort of thing. And if your sales team isn't on board with selling the website, offer them incentives as well. Uh, For the most package deals sold, the most online revenue generated, the most feature sponsorships sold, that sort of thing. I've seen it where the station manager invests in their folks like this and bonuses them for exceeding goals, and the website just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, number five, lastly, think beyond banner ads. Banner ads are still an effective means of advertising, but as a website owner, be aware of other possibilities that exist out there. There's tons of things, all right? And I could go on and on. These are just a few like online-only contests. This is where the client pays for the promotion online and on air and for the database entries where the entrants opt in. So they would put this on their website, but it's better to put it on the radio station websites because the radio station has an ability to promote it a whole lot better than they would. So they would pay for that opportunity. Uh, Video live spots. I've seen these on YouTube live and on Facebook live events where uh, it was actually added to their remote package where we'll also do a Facebook live from your uh, event. You have client written articles as well. You may have seen this on entrepreneur.com and some other websites where the client actually writes articles about their expertise and they pay to have it put on the website. Of course, that links to their website uh, and, and that sort of thing. You have featured events where the client appears prominent on the website or maybe the homepage slider rather than mixed in with other events. A featured directory listing, if you have directory listings on your website where the client pays extra to be at the very top in their category. You have password protected content that you could do, uh, set listener appointments and give out a certain link on air. And if they have the password, which they would have heard had to have here on air, that unlocks that maybe a special client coupon, online prizes, free gifts, that sort of thing. All right, so there are a lot of great things that are beyond the banner ad that you could put on your website. So those are our five. The owner, GM, committed to an active online presence. They ensure everyone is on the same page. They assign a online point person or digital content director. They offer performance incentives and or bonuses, and they think beyond the typical banner ads. Now, there are some pitfalls to avoid in all of this. You don't want to devalue your online assets. Every online location that your station has to offer should be treated as a premium space and monetized as such. You may want to start out packaging your online inventory with on-air schedule, but don't ever consider online on your website as a giveaway, a bonus, or value added. Instead, use phrases like, we've created a custom package for you that integrates all of our assets. Avoid cluttering up your website with ads. Doing this can easily cloud the content that visitors keep returning to day after day. Instead, add more ad spaces and offer page sponsorships and other options. Some of those things where you think beyond the banner ads, offer your clients some of those rather than cluttering your website up with banner ads. Don't provide reasons for your visitors to leave like RSS feeds. Remember, they are not content. RSS feeds provide multiple reasons why your audience should just leave and go elsewhere. And when they leave and go elsewhere, they leave your advertisers as well. And lastly, don't use copyrighted images. Even in your local community, have your online content director, an intern, or even your sales team start building a local photography database of police cars, town buildings, fire trucks, schools, everything around your community. So if a news story broke out, you don't have to go get a picture of it. You already have it in your database and you're ready to go and you're ready to get that information out there as quickly as possible. All right, some key takeaways from today is insight passion among all staff members to see the website succeed. Think of it as another radio station. They're not just on your radio station now. Now they're on the radio station and the website. It's two separate things. If you haven't started a digital strategy plan to increase your audience and sales month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year, then do that now. Assign a team member as a point person in that. It doesn't have to be the only thing that they do, and really it doesn't have to take up a whole lot of time in their day. Just have somebody be the point person on that. Use on-air, social media, email, everything together to drive traffic to the website. Track your website statistics to ensure you're growing month after month. Create a digital inventory list for your sales team so they know that every opportunity out there that's available for them to sell. 
Invest in your personnel into generating content and cultivating new content ideas. Generate compelling local content so that your station website really becomes the community hub of information. If you are in a very, very small market, be the place that folks come to for information. They know that you're going to have it first, and so build that loyalty. Uh, think beyond banner ads. There are all kinds of unique ways out there to generate revenue from your station websites. And then look for new ways to start turning content into revenue. Think of everything as content. How can you turn that into something that you can monetize? Can a popular web feature become a separate brand on its own? That could happen over time. So look for those opportunities as well. Hopefully this information helps you. And if you need somebody to come alongside you and help with your radio station website, reach out to us at skyrocketradio.com. Have an awesome week online, making your radio station website better. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Better Radio Websites. Inspired by today's episode? Be sure you are subscribed and share this episode with a friend. Visit skyrocketradio.com forward slash podcasts for more episodes as well as show notes for this episode. Need help starting or making your station website better? Visit skyrocketradio.com.